that is Mount Benthua and I'm going to run to the top of it no not today in August in the middle of August there is a race to the top of Mount Benthua and back down again but there's a problem by language learning standards that is a C1 mountain and I am a B2 runner so what am I gonna do Well, the first thing I'm going to do is give myself plenty of time. I think four months should be enough to get from a B2 level of running to a C1 level. And that's what you need to do if you're preparing for an exam, an English exam. Don't leave it to the last minute. Make sure you're, you're ready. You give yourself plenty of time in advance to, to prepare. The second thing I'm going to do, even before I start preparation, is to, to make sure I know my why, that I establish a very clear why, why I want to run to the top of that mountain. Um, in my case, it's um, for motivation reasons, because if I, when I don't have a, a race to prepare for, I find it difficult to motivate myself to go out and run. Um, and that's very common for people who take uh, English exams too. If you decide to take an English exam, it's to help focus your studies, to, to give you a reason to study, to, to study the grammar, the vocabulary, etc. For other people, it's just a personal challenge, just to, to prove to themselves that they can pass the exam. And for other people, it's, it's a necessity. They need it for their, for their job or to move to another country or to start a university. So there are various reasons why you might want to take an exam, but, but make sure you know what yours is before you even start the preparation, because it's a long and arduous process. You need to dedicate a lot of time, effort, and sometimes money to the preparation, so establish your why. Also, when I decided to run to that mountain, I'm being realistic. You need to set realistic goals. I'm not trying to run to the top of a C2 mountain. That's beyond my abilities, and even in four months or probably two years, I wouldn't be able to do that. So you have to be realistic. When you choose an English exam that you want to take, uh, be realistic that it's something that you can achieve. It's good to be ambitious in the long term, um, then if you want to reach a C2 level of English, then great. Think in, a, in two years, three years, four years, I want to reach that level. But your short-term short objectives should be realistic. Now, once I start my training for the race, I'm going to make sure I'm consistent, that I run regularly. Maybe not every day, it's not necessary to run every day, but I need to get some kind of routine of running so I can improve my fitness in order to be able to run to the top of the mountain and back again. And again, it's the same with your, your English exam. It, you need to be consistent in your studies, you need to make it part of your daily routine, whether it's specific exam exercises or just learning, um, revising grammar and vocabulary, for example. I'm also going to get to know the route of the, the race very well before I start. I don't want to get lost <laughs> in the middle of the race. So I'm going to do, do a bit of research um, in my preparation so I know the route of the the race very well again for your english exam you need to know the format of the exam you need to know what is expected of you in each part of the exam and how you're going to approach each part of the exam it's like learning uh, the route of the race i'm also going to do some specific training for the race this is running up a hill a very big hill or a mountain um, so i'll need to do some very specific training of running up mountains so i'm particularly prepared for this type of race and again, let's see how far I can take this analogy, but for your English exam, you'll need to practice specifically for the exam. So do sample papers, sample papers of that specific exam. Having said that, for my training, I'm also going to take quite a holistic approach. It's not just about running. It's also about uh, strength training to build my muscles. Also, I'm going to think about the type of food I eat. I have to eat healthily if I want to run to the top of the mountain and also drink less alcohol, for example. So again, for your English exam, you need to immerse yourself in English, not just specific exam preparation, but you need to be watching films in English, listening to podcasts in English, reading articles, books, everything in English. It's a holistic approach. And the last thing I'm going to do in my preparation for running up the mountain is to run the route. Hopefully I'll be able to run that specific route. I'm going to run to the top of the mountain and back again. So I know the route very well, so it's very clear. And with your English exam, that's the equivalent of doing a mock exam. So try to do the whole exam under exam conditions as much as possible, uh, timing each part, 
um, and thinking about how you'll feel in the exam itself. You need to be familiar with the exam, as familiar as possible before you take the exam itself. And finally, when I finish the race, that's not the end for me. That's not really the, the, the final objective, just to run to the top of a mountain and back again. I'm not going to win this race. There will be other runners who are probably C1 or C2 level runners, and I have no chance of beating them. That's not the objective. It's just a short-term objective on the road to the longer-term objective of keeping fit and healthy in my life, because I feel that's important. And again, for your English, when you take your exam, that's not the end of the journey. You have to continue your relationship with English and continue learning. Okay, have I taken that analogy a little bit too far? Possibly, but I just want to emphasize that there's a lot to take into consideration when you decide that you want to prepare for and pass an English exam. And it's very similar to running to the top of a mountain and back again. I'll keep you up to date with my training and I'll let you know how the race goes, but uh, I've still got about four months to prepare for that. So let's see how it goes. Okay, hope to see you very soon for another video. Take care, bye.